Now, angels won't always tell you what you want to hear, but my experience with them has been that whatever message they're giving you, it will come through with a feeling of calm. It'll come through often with a feeling of, of clarity and it will come through with the feeling that you can there's do passion. It. There's desire to see you do well and they won't, they won't leave. Hey everybody, it's Tanya here. Welcome to Women Working With Light, a series of interviews of soul-stirring conversations with women just like you around the world, doing what they love in service to themselves and to others. We are the healers, light workers, way showers, star seeds, artists, channelers, and so much more. My guest today is Erin Lee of Heavenly Messenger. She is a fourth generation psychic medium, intuitive, Reiki master and spiritual teacher. This is part two of our conversation and don't forget to check out part one where the link is above and today we're going to talk about angels, channeling spirit and the occasional ET. I think that there's something about working with the angels that might need to come forward because I know a lot of people relate to that but aren't really sure how to bridge that. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll just ask you specifically. Okay. Um, maybe a two-parter like first off what is it like to be working with the angel energies and mm -hmm. do you find that that is requested by a lot of the people that come to see you so i think i'm going to use I, i'm going to i'm going to approach the second question first because for me that's the easiest one to answer um i really i put it out there like my 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 business name is heaven lee my last name is lee um and so you know there are already kind of some connotations with that in it um, and I talk about angels on my website and I talk about angels when I do my lives and the different things that I do. So I think that people come to me knowing that that's part of where I come from. So whether it's what they're specifically coming to me for or not, um, I think that many people are, are aware that that's where I come from because I, I don't hide it. It's, it's like really for you there. when you're connecting with them. I'm, I'm just curious because you were asking me about my experience. So now I'd like to know what yours is like. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, when I, when I connect with angels, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's, it's like uh, relationships. Like we were talking about before um, the way that I would, the way that I would approach it actually is by talking about connecting with deceased loved ones when when I connect with deceased loved ones it's like meeting somebody new for the first time and I also have a bit of social anxiety yeah, meeting, and so meeting new people can be really uncomfortable for me and so you know when I'm connecting with somebody's deceased loved one I'm meeting somebody new for the first time so it's like having to work through that where uh -huh. when when I connect with angels for me, it's really easy because first of all, they, they want to connect their, their purpose is to connect with humans, to help and to support us. Like that is literally the purpose that they have. Um, but it's easy because now that I've been working with them for so long, their energy feels familiar. Um, I, I did a show um, on our Oracle chats. It was back on September the 11th because that's International wow. Angel Day. And the way that sorry, I- Can you say that again? I'm sorry to interrupt, but the yeah. microphone went weird. It, September 11th is what? Is International Angel Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so on, on the live, on the Oracle chats live, we talked about angels and the way that I started it was with a whole pile of memes that I see on Facebook. <sighs> this is my guardian angel after I do something or, yeah. <laughs> or, or I'm the reason my guardian angel drinks or, <laughs> you know, all of, all of the things that are shared about angels and guardian angels. And like, you know, they're going to leave me, they're going to ask for another assignment or. <laughs> yeah, I know those well. <laughs> and I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I, I get, I get a chuckle out of them too. It's funny. Um, but I mean, your angels or angels just in general, unconditional love. Um, they will always be there to help you and support you. You aren't taking them away from anybody else that is more important because they are able to be with everybody simultaneously. Um, and there is, for me, there's a sense of like love and support that comes with that, knowing that, um, you know, I'm not, 
I'm not taking away from somebody else who maybe I might feel needs more than, than I do. Cause I mean, goodness knows as a human, as a woman, that's something that I go through. Oh no, no, don't worry about me. You, you have greater need than I do. Mm -hmm. So to be able to work with like a being of light that literally it's there to help and to support me and whoever else I'm, I'm working with, like, that's their purpose. And I'm not taking away from anybody else. And I can like relax into that sense of like comfort. Um, it's, it truly is uh, like being unconditionally loved and one, right. One of, one of, one of the things that I experience when, when I work with my clients is there are so many people who have not experienced unconditional love in their lifetime. And um, there are so many people who haven't had the experience of non-judgment, of, of not being judged. And to me, that's a big part of what is offered when working with angels, that there is love, there's compassion, there's desire to see you do well, and they won't, they won't leave, you know, part of, part of being human is the possibility that even somebody where you have an unconditionally loving relationship, they might leave, Um, they might not no longer be present. So, I mean, even in those really amazing relationships, it's not something that we can truly like trust and support or trust to support us always because that's just the nature of humanity but angels are different (laughs) so so for me that that's what it's like and incredible and they all have different personalities too I was just gonna ask you that (laughs) (laughs) They all have different personalities. And I mean, like for me, the ones that people tend to be really aware of because there's been a lot of information, a lot of talk about them are like Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, Archangel, um, I was going to say Uriel. He's he's becoming a little more aware uh, or well-known. Um, but Gabriel is is who I was thinking of. Um, Metatron that, that you've spoken about and Sandalfin as well. They're, they're gaining some more awareness too. Um, but one that I've really been working with the last couple of years is Archangel Haniel. Um, and and (laughs) I I love working with her and it took me the longest time to recognize that I'd been working with her forever because her energy to me is very gentle. It's very subtle. Um, I I refer to Archangel Haniel in the feminine because that's how I feel and experience her, her energy. Um, Mm -hmm. Angels are are non-gendered. It's just, you know, what we identify um, but I, I feel a lot of similarity between her and like the unconditional love and support that I would, I would feel with say like mother Mary, um, mm. I see their energies being very similar. And interestingly, um, the colors that I experience with them, um, are similar as well. They both really resonate with blue for me and how I experience them. I was just going to say how I see Hanael, you were wearing the exact color. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, I was gonna ask that. Oh, she got there. I was, yeah, oh, yeah. she got there too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it's the easiest interview. I can just do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just sit back. That's it's one of the benefits of working with a psychic, right? Is right. like coming through. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a here's a, a contentious question, but do you have a favorite? <laughs> Man, I feel like, like- I feel like a parent who has amazing kids and you're asking me to choose just one. (laughs) They're all my favorite. I mean, that's a fair answer. (laughs) You know, yeah, they're, they're all my favorite because they bring, they bring such different things to, to me and to my experience. I mean, um, I think probably there are ones that I might call on more than others because I've I've worked with them more. Um, like uh, when I really started doing a lot of like my learning and and training and understanding, Michael and Raphael, like they were the big guys. So I've been working with them for a really long time. So mm-hmm. like I naturally gravitate towards asking them. And it's only been in the last couple of years that I've really focused on expanding and being like, okay, well, who else? Right. Um, so I had this incredibly amazing experience with Archangel Haniel um, last September. It was the full moon. 
and I was out raking and I was in the yard and I was doing this yard work as the moon was coming up. And I was, I was frustrated. I was in a place of um, devastation. I had ended some significant and long-term friendships and relationships. Like one was like a 27 year relationship and going through like all of the processing with that and really getting into that human, (laughs) that human experience, that human mindset and going down that spiral. And I just happened to look up and, and Archangel Haniel was just right there in the clouds. Um, I'll I'll share the picture with you later. (laughs) I don't have it handy. It literally looked like angel wings in the clouds around this full moon that was coming up. And, you know, like Archangel Haniel is the angel who is most connected with the moon and particularly with the full moon. And one of the ways that she helped Sorry, I didn't know that. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Like she is all about the moon. And and that's why Moonstone is one of her her crystals as well. Um, Yeah. So but she also helps us to see um, the beauty and like the positive in the situation. She can help us to shift that mindset and come into a place of love for ourselves and for other people. And she works really strongly with people developing intuition. (laughs) So. It's like, obviously, (laughs) but as I said, her energy is much more um, subtle. It's a lot quieter. Um, And and I have some theories around that. I think in part because there's been so much energy around like Michael and Raphael that they they come through really strongly. They've got really big energies. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, you know, if I look at the things that um, Archangel Haniel helps and supports with um, women and the transitions that we go through in life is also part of what she helps us with. So Mm -hmm. like coming into puberty and moving through like childbearing years and moving into menopause and years after that, she helps us with all of those transitions. Um, So like the work that she does is not that really in your face work. It is much gentler and quieter. So I think that that's part of the reason those two things part of the reason that it can be a little more difficult to discern that she's with you. Wow. That was a beautiful description of her energy and your experience with her. It's amazing. It's, it's funny that you were saying that about calling on them at different times, because I forget sometimes. And, and when I first had this circle that I call it the circle, but it's actually like, you can see the Merkaba here. Yep. Um, my spirit group, I have an inner group, which is the Merkaba points, and then it's three dimensional. So my higher self and then my, my guide on, underneath. And then around that is a huge circle and each circle is a group with groups inside. And so in the angelic group, there's 18, there's 18 points in this Merkaba that I made, which <laughs> represents all of them. Yep. And so when I sit down to meditate, I call everybody forward. So like even getting into meditation can take 20 minutes because there's a lot of, there's a, like a <laughs> moon call that goes on. And uh, that's how I remember them sometimes. Like I'll have to sit down and be like, okay, uh, Sandalphon, Michael, Metatron, Ariel, Uriel, Gabriel, Jeremiah, Jophiel, Yahuel. And then I'll just like go all the way around and do the full circle. Mm-hmm. And I do forget to call on a lot of them some of the times. And there's some that I work with like Jophiel, Mm. and Jeremiah who are both aligned with um, nature and aesthetic and art and creation um, and I can't say that I'm an expert on working with angels and all their affinities I don't know them all it's yeah. just a feeling sense like when you were saying big energy and people think of Michael I'm like there's Raziel over here going hi right? <laughs> <laughs> what about me you're absolutely right <laughs> There's so many of them and they're all different. And that's what's so fascinating about working with angels and and learning to discover it. And what an incredible gift that must be for you to have that present, like not just in the work, but like outside of your work and to know that they're always there. I think it'll be helpful for a lot of other people, the the unconditional love part, because it's easy to forget. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And again, I think it's kind of getting stuck in like that human aspect of the experience that, that we have, right? Is that feeling of disconnect, of not being loved and, and recognizing that the people who are around us are also having those experiences too. And so if we're needing a little support, we, we have the option to, to look to others. Yeah. 
So there were, there were two things that popped up for me. Um, one was even, even if you can't remember the names and you're needing some help, it, it doesn't matter. Angels, please help me with this or angels. I'm really struggling with this. You don't have to call them by name. You're not going to be taking anybody away. Um, so just, just know that if you don't remember, you can always just generally ask and they'll be there. They'll come. And if there's one angel who is, you know, in a better place to support what you're working with, they'll, they'll be there. Um, they already know it's just a matter of you inviting them in. Mm. And, yeah. I think that's, that's really important, especially yeah. for people that are just coming into this. Mm -hmm. um, and even some of us who are seasoned in it, I forget that myself as well. You know, you actually have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't heard from anybody in like two weeks. So, yeah. Did you ask for help? <laughs> right. <laughs> probably just. And then, were you right. willing? Were you willing to accept it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Tell me again what I want to hear. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, you know, angels won't always tell you what you want to hear, but my experience with them has been that whatever message they're giving you, it will come through with a feeling of calm. It'll come through often with a feeling of, of clarity and it will come through with the feeling that you can do it. So, um, one of the, one of the things that I use is let's say that you've been getting messages to go to the gym and let's say you've been really resistant to going to the gym. If that message is coming through from your angels, though, it will always come through with this feeling of even though it's something you don't want to do, it will be good for you. It will hold you. It will support you. And it won't be a feeling of like being beaten up like, oh, you should really go to the gym. That would never come from your angels. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's ego. So yeah. so if it comes through with a feeling of love and support then that's one of the ways that you can tell that you're connecting with your angels. And I found that they really enjoy laughing too. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Well, I know whenever I've done readings with you, um, all sorts of crazy folks come through, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and not the human ones, the human ones never show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get all these crazy higher dimensional, who the heck is that? Yeah. Everybody got to reach out and say hi, which is good. Yeah. But the angels do come through and it, it really does. You know, it's it's going to sound like a strange thing to say. But for me, the angelic energy is very human feeling. It's very grounded. It, mm -hmm. it brings me back in. Mm -hmm. It's a very different experience, whether that's me connecting with them or getting a reading with someone like you who can connect with them. It, it really makes me feel um, just kind of centered and grounded and OK that I'm having this experience. That's yeah. Way to say it. You so. know, I I wonder if part of that is because you do have such like high vibe, like out of this world kind of energy, and probably <laughs> and part of the purpose for angels is to like help and support us in this journey. I suspect that part of the reason that that's part of the experience that you have is that they're helping to like accommodate and to make room and say, Hey, like, here's a, a comfortable place, a comfortable spot where you can be and kind of an acknowledging and recognizing that the experience for somebody who is a star seed in a physical body is not always comfortable. It truly right? is. It truly can be a thing where your mind just isn't connecting all of all of the dots um, because there can be a lot of information that comes at you fairly quickly um, mm -hmm. because like when when it comes through for me like I I tell people like if if you have a question that comes up or if something doesn't make sense like jump in because I'm going to keep going because that's just how it's coming yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know it can also be like an information overload and and you're just you're trying to put all of the pieces to, together. So, I mean, I think one of the best things that people can do when they go for readings is, um, you know, to have an idea of perhaps the topics that they want to talk about and the things that they want to look at, that certainly is really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. But um, also to come in without expectation around, you know, how you're going to hear things or who is going to show up and just allow what needs to come through to come through. And, uh, and I have to just say, Metatron has been like, is it my turn yet? Is it my turn yes. yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For like five minutes right here. Like, you ready? Can we now? Now? 
<laughs> oh, it's, you know, it's so funny that you mentioned Metatron. Last weekend, I sat in on a past life regression healing course, like learning how to do that. And Archangel Metatron is one of the angels that we we work with for that. So, you know, I've worked with him from an energy healing capacity because he also helps and supports people working with energy healing, but I hadn't experienced him in quite that way before. So I'm glad that he's hanging out with you and saying, hey, like... <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> For me, he's he's always been the like let's get it done guy. You know, mm-hmm. uh, the angels for me are so fascinating, and and um, I work not all the time, but there are eighteen different archangels that I have in my circle of many others, yeah. and the archangels are fascinating. It's always Metatron and Sandalphon together, and then Michael in front. Yep, and then a whole bunch around. But um, he's always been very, just like the sacred geometry, it's um, almost, it's hard to explain it, but it's like an energy that's not linear is very linear. It's very goal focused. You know? mm-hmm. And I think maybe that's why Metatron comes to so many people that are uh, working as way showers or light workers, because it's really uh, helping to bring that energy and excitement and awareness that can be really nebulous and yeah. And, and, it. and it would help, help other people. So, yeah, I know. I just thought it was like, okay, something's coming up because he's he's wanting to chat. And so, I love <laughs> it. Can, can we take a moment? I'd love to hear how you experience angels and particularly given that you connect with so many other beings as well, light beings as well. How do, how do you feel and experience angels? Um, so when I do the channeling work that I've done, what I, I have a very specific process now that took a while to develop and, and it was, um, and I'm just going to take a sidebar into this because I know a lot of people are waking up to this and I just want to share my experience. Yeah. Maybe it will help you. Um, in the beginning, it's like, Oh my God, I've connected with something. This is exciting. What is it? And you're just like more, 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 give me more. And there is no boundaries and no filters and you do not know who you are talking to and you are opening yourself wide to whatever energy and entity has decided to come say hello. Mm -hmm. It it might be fortuitous and you might be connecting with angelics and higher dimensional supportive beings, or it might not be. Yeah. And so you have to be very mindful and use intention. And that took me a while to develop. So now what I really like to do is I have a very specific way of, creating, I used to, I was of the school that you had to sit in lotus position and meditate for an hour and get into a particular headspace and get very calm in order to connect. And so I literally spent years where I was on the floor in lotus position for two and a half hours every day. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, that was 2012. Yeah, that was good times. Yeah, yeah, that would have been a a significant time. (laughs) Yeah, that's when all of that was jazzing up. And now it's not like that at all. Now I just create a space. I have my own space that I see in my mind. I ask Archangel Michael to come forward. He's my gatekeeper. So he basically mm-hmm. is at the door and I create the space and I, I wait and see or hear a knock sometimes actually. And it'll be either a very specific group or entity mm-hmm. or it will be a choice. And then I invite them into the room and we come and have a conversation. Mm-hmm. With the case of the galactic groups, what I'll do is I'll hang out with their energy for a week. Mm-hmm. And we'll have this actual, you know, it, this is in my meditation, my third eye, this actual conversation, and then I'll record because then they will bring messages through me and that gets recorded into a, a channeled message. Beautiful. Just that I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I bring them through and then they all have their own flavor and, um, that's the energy that way. And so that's how it works with the galactics. With the angels, it wasn't like that. It was more of a, in particular, Raphael, who who I hadn't had a lot of um, visions in my life. Mm-hmm. I've had incredibly crystal clear dreams that were like movies with colors and sound and smell and taste, like everything. Mm-hmm. And then they stopped for a really, really long time, like just completely stopped. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I had this dream but it was more of a vision. It was Raphael who showed up and he was like, Hey, guess what? I'm going to teach you how to do a certain type of healing. And I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And it was so incredible and clear. And it was like being in school. And, and the difference for me to answer your question, look, I can do that (laughs) is 
when I'm sitting with the angels and the angelic energy, it feels more, I don't want to say human, but mm -hmm. humanoid. Like there's a, a, a relationship, there's an emotion, there's a almost a tangible sense. You know, it's like mm -hmm. sitting down with a friend and having a discussion or in that particular scenario, being a student and being shown and, and learning how to do something from a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the galactic energies, which have been much more, they have their own flavor. And by flavor, I mean vibration. Mm -hmm. so I will physically feel a vibration. I find that when I'm channeling galactics, I start swaying. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the energy just starts moving. And that's how I know I'm connected. And, but that's about it. Other than that, you know, I'm not, amorphous is not a good word. It's almost like, I mean, you brought up Star Trek earlier. I think it's a good analogy that a lot of people will relate to. So when they're in the transporter and mm -hmm. the, the energy is like kind of shimmery. Yeah. Like there's like yeah. a zillion atoms that you're seeing. And if you stand back, like those third eye drawings, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. if you looked at it a certain way, it's kind of like that, but but you're feeling all of those molecules of information and connection at the same time. Mm -hmm. I hope Which, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> that, that totally makes sense because kind of what I'm seeing as you're saying that is it feels like as you're connecting with galactics, your energy and vibration is completely shifting. And I'm seeing that almost being how the integration of the, the knowledge or the awareness or the message or the connection, how that's, that's happening. It kind yeah. of reminds me of like the way that molecules act when you boil water, they start yeah. to bounce all over the place and they expand. Like it doesn't change. It's still water, yeah. but how fast it's, it's vibrating. And yeah. then it's almost like preparing you to receive. It's interesting because I think there is part of that that's going on, but yet it's, it's, it's also a synergy, you know, like I say that I'm a conduit, but of course they're, they're, and I'm sure you, well, maybe you don't actually, this is a question for you. Yeah, give it to me. Do you find that when you are channeling that there is a synergy between your energy and who you're channeling or connecting with? I don't know if you use the word channeling or do you have it completely separate? So yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't call myself um, a conduit when I'm connecting with uh, like with angels or with deceased loved ones or anything like that. For me, um, it remains separate and, and it's like having a conversation. So the way that you were describing how you connect with angels, that really resonates for me because that's, that's how I feel like I connect with them. Um, you know, sometimes um, I will feel them like in my body because there's like healing work that's happening or I'll feel them really strongly around me. And I'm like, oh yeah, like you're in me now. Um, but that ne isn't necessarily how I get my messages and information. Like I see that as being more of like a love or a support or kind of the way that you'd hug somebody, kind of mm -hmm. like an angelic hug. So, you know, what I'm, what I'm seeing for you is, is different from how I experience galactics again, because like I have very small experience comparatively. Um, but I do see the way that you connect as being different from how I connect to, does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. I'm just, I, it's for me, it's such a curiosity because yeah. everyone's doing it in their own different way. And as we're speaking, it's really helping me to understand a bit about the process because I I'm as somebody that's had sort of a knowingness, I just take it at face value. It's not a surprise. It's just like, mm -hmm. oh, the surprises for me are when I get like you're somebody like you who has mirrored that back to me. Thank you. Yeah. Then yeah. Go, sure. Oh yeah. The, 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 this is this sort of a thing that's happening there. It's not just a conduit. There is, you know, like I really am taking their energy into me and it's fusing in the yeah. moment Yeah. Uh, until it's released. Yeah. So my energy is shifting because Absolutely. that's, I guess that's one of my superpowers. It's a strange one, but, um, I can sit with a super high frequency energy and I want to be very clear that just because I can do that, it doesn't mean that I have guru status or anything like that. I mean, it's just, it's just an ability. And I know a lot of people really equate high vibration with a hierarchy of mm -hmm. ascension in the old school way, meaning that the higher you go, the better you are. And I think that's really just not true. I think that's mm -hmm. just, it's just yeah. ego. 
Yeah. In fact, one of the things that I focus on when I talk about energy is faster and slower. Um, like I, the idea that there is hierarchy means that there is something that is better than and something that is less than. And I, I think one of the ways to, one of the things that we need to start doing is shifting away from better and less than, but just, this is the experience that I'm having. This is where I am. It's no better or worse than what that person is experiencing. It's just, this is what I need. Um, yeah. This is where I am. I want to talk about UFOs and aliens, and I'm just trying to figure out how to bridge that. And I don't think there is one. So I'll just keep the 180 in there. Because okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> And, you know, like it's something that I don't have a huge amount of experience around. So I don't know how much I can I can speak to it. But like what I what I see is the the dichotomy, like that changing of the understanding of what people have, what we've been told has been true or not true and like fighting against that. I, I think that that's a big part of what we're seeing where old understandings and knowledge is falling away and because there's change that's involved with that it's difficult for people to to comprehend I don't know does that make sense it does and but I also know that you yourself um because you work with spirit mm -hmm. have definitely connected at least when you were chatting with me you definitely yep. connected with some higher dimensional groups and some multi-dimensional yeah. groups and Absolutely. um how do you find that experience as somebody working with spirit? Or is it the same as working with angelics or do you find it like a totally different experience? It's, it's definitely a different energy. And I think that it has to do with like different vibrations. And, you know, when, regardless of, of who I'm working with, if I'm, I'm working with spirit, if I'm working with angels, if I'm, you know, working with more, um, I don't know what the correct term would be, but like extraterrestrial um, is probably how I would would term it is they all feel different. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, they the, the messages and the information, it, it still comes through those same pathways, but it just it feels really different. It's it's kind of like talking with somebody who has uh, like a slower vibration compared to talking with somebody that you're on the same wavelength with compared to talking with somebody that you're like, wow, you're vibrating in a completely different place. Like, I see what you're saying and I understand mm -hmm. and I appreciate it. But like, I know that that's not where I am, but. Like, so I is it like if you, if you know, when those little kids get too much cotton candy at the fair, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> does it feel like that? Like, do you have the energy that, that feels like too frantic, too chaotic, or is it just the way that they're interacting? I think that, so I don't get really, I don't get really frantic, but sometimes I can get really excited because they're giving me a lot, right? Uh, because the channel is is really open. They're giving me a lot. Um, one of the things that I appreciate is as we start getting into like the higher vibrations, they recognize that I'm only able to, to like receive a certain amount and they have the ability to cater to that. So mm -hmm. I think, I think the way that I would describe it is um, when I, when I connect with deceased loved ones, so people who have crossed over, um, their energy is a lot closer. It's a lot slower um, because it's closer to us. There's ego is still present. Um, so when I connect, it's like, I only have to raise my energy and vibration this much, but when I connect with angels, say the energy and vibrations a lot faster, but they're able to bring it down to me, right? Down more to my level. And the same is true with dealing with extraterrestrial. It's, it's almost like that feeling that they have an awareness and an understanding that I'm only going to be able to receive a certain amount. So they'll give me that. And then they give me a little bit extra. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of like, um, I don't play chess, but this is the, this is the reference that's coming to mind. It's kind of like playing chess with somebody who is a lot better than you and they're kind of catering to your level, but they're still going to beat you. Like they're not going to let you win. <laughs> they're still going to beat you, but it's like you have the opportunity to interact and engage and to learn. And so that's, I think the way that I would describe connecting with um, more extraterrestrial energy is they have the power and the ability to, um, to adjust mm. how much they give so that I'm able to accept it. Does that make sense? And, and to understand yeah. it. 
Yeah. No, it does. I'm just curious because as a channel, it's different for me because I'm, I'm more of a conduit. So mm -hmm. I'm not a trans channeler where I let a group or an entity come in and take over my body. It's, yeah. it's hard to explain. It's kind of like if you can imagine a tunnel um, with light on the outside and the energy is coming through and going out, whether that's verbal or light codes or whatever the yeah. part that I'm doing. Yeah. And they all, they all have their own resonance and flavor. Absolutely. Every single one of them is different. Some of the really high vibe ones are, I don't know how to explain it. I don't feel it in my body. It's like, I'm feeling it. Next, like <laughs> in, in your, in oh, your right. out of body <laughs> chakras. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, and the vibration is super, super fine. Mm. Hard to explain this. It's hard to put energetics into words sometimes, but. Um, kind of what I'm seeing is that it, yeah. it almost like it, it funnels down, like. When, when I talk about clear cognizance, that's how I receive the majority, many of my messages, which is thoughts and ideas. So that's coming in through my crown chakra. But when you're describing what you're experiencing, we do have like at least one upper set of chakras, potentially more. And mm -hmm. it's like they're coming in through those chakras and it's like refining it as it comes into your awareness. That's how oh, I'm yeah. seeing it. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's giving me a really great visual. Like I'm thinking of um, those 1940s movies with the mad scientist and they had the tubes with the blue liquid that was released. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I was I was seeing Plinko from Price is Right. But, oh. you know. <laughs> Don't forget to meet her and spay your pets, by the way. Right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> It's always good to have a couple of PSAs in any yes. podcast. So that's number two. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that because I'm just, I'm really curious what the experience is like for other people. And mm -hmm. so I think maybe just to end our conversation, mm -hmm. I would love to ask you, so what is the thing that you love about the work that you do? I mean, I know you love a lot, but I mean, what is the thing that you find gets you up out of bed every day? <laughs> there are so many things. Um, you know, first and foremost, I, I love connecting with people. Um, one of the things that I, I tend to see is, um, you know, the way that people are, are growing. And I see people, I see the things that they don't see about themselves. And when I'm able to relay that to them, it, it's kind of like a, oh, I never saw that. Or, you know, I can take a moment to celebrate what they've done because we get so busy in our day-to-day -day lives that we don't see that broader picture. And, and I see that and I can relay that to them. And it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't see it that way. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I think that's, I think that's one of the, the things is that um, I, I help people to see things in, in a different way that allows them to open up to, to new things, to, to let things go or to, to, to find some healing or to find some comfort. Um, and to me, I mean, what an amazing, what an amazing gift for me to be on the receiving end of, of witnessing somebody being in that place of understanding. Like I, I it's, mm. it's just, it's truly just such a gift to, Aww. to experience what they're experiencing. Oh, thank you for sharing that. It makes my heart so happy. <laughs> Books are reading. <laughs> <laughs> and visit Erin. <laughs> thank you for sharing so much about the work that you love doing and your interactions with people and spirit. And it's just, it's, it's really heartwarming. And I love being able to chat with you and hear about this. And I love that we can just connect and like no time has passed yeah. and just jump down all the rabbit holes and it's all good. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I am, I, I am just, I'm truly honored to one have been invited to, to share like how many people get to share something that they love. So thank you for that opportunity. And for everybody who has watched, like, thank you um, for thinking that there might be some value in what I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> and and thank you Tanya for for doing this because this is just such an amazing an amazing gift that you are offering to people and you're showing them some light and um I, I really appreciate that and I'm grateful for the time that you've taken to be here so thank oh, you thank you Erin so yeah. sweet and we'll talk to you soon I look forward to it thanks Tanya bye <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
Learn more about Erin and the work that she's doing over at heavenlymessenger.com and bookingwitherin.com. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy this interview series and this channel, please consider donating to help it keep going and also to like, share and subscribe. You never know who might benefit by you sharing some information that they can use to help themselves. Thank you so much for being here and we'll see you next time.